uh, all, all is well from our side, if I, if I can speak for everyone. Uh, it was definitely great to, to meet you last week and, and get that more kind of um, dialed down or kind of focusing in on, on what we can do. Obviously, there was a lot of information uh, that we discussed. We didn't get to do everything we wanted, we were hoping to, given time constraints. Uh, but it did give us a very strong foundation to work on. And we took our time uh, as a team to kind of come back and, and digest all that information and, and see what we thought we could do, which would be most beneficial to you, given given our resources. And, and we kind of outlined that in the um, in the Sunday update, and which we'll go through today. But for today, what we, we really wanted to do was kind of go through four key areas, uh, and that is defining on uh, the the deliverable that we could uh, provide you with, uh, verify our current understanding of our goals, clarify some key facts, and then gather all that information to finalize our work plan and kind of get this um, get this project up and up and running, if you will. Um, and, and kind of before we do that, before getting into that kind of formal area, uh, kind of as a, a, a back thought that we had is uh, speaking with Peter, there, there might be an opportunity uh, for us to kind of really not only pretend or when we like to be a consulting firm, but act really as a consulting firm in respect that we see a lot of projects uh, seem to have on-ground expertise uh, and getting to know the client on a one-on-one -on -one relationship is very valuable, we think, uh, aside from having a Zoom call. So we explore the potential of having the School of Environment helping us in, uh, in, in coming to visit you. So we were wondering if that might be something that might be of interest to you guys. Uh, whether you think that might be valuable, whether it be like a, a, a one-day site visit or just a one-day uh, meeting to come and see you guys. Uh, but it is something that we have explored and we think could uh, kind of foster a stronger relationship between us. Obviously, having met in person, I think it, it, it helps kind of create a stronger bond and uh, work towards that final project in a, in a more efficient manner. So we're wondering whether that would be something of interest and something worth exploring. Oh, what what kind of time frame were you thinking about that for as far as potential visitor? Uh, as um, uh, so time frame with regards to dates or length? Is this something that you're saying like w right now within the semester or sometime afterwards? Like once once we get so, more on the so road? well, what we yeah, it, it could be both. Uh, we're happy to explore. We obviously didn't want to impose. We wanted to see if this was something that you'd be interested in, obviously having us. Uh, we understand that you have busy schedules, so you might not even have uh, the time to meet us in person. Uh, but so we remain flexible in terms of uh, in terms of time frame. But obviously, either in the earlier stages, it, it's always most most useful. Mm -hmm. What's the um, what's the length of the the semester that you guys do? What's the deadline on this project? So the final deadline, if I'm not incorrect, falls around mid-April. Please, uh, if somebody else thinks otherwise, it's a late April deadline. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, as far as the house here, there's we're gonna hold an open house as soon as we finish uh, this one here, and that that would possibly be a good time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it. Go ahead, Martin. Yeah, no, as uh, as far as timing goes, it would be good to see the actual product that we're working with and because that's, I mean, that is a big deal. That's what we're focusing around because we can't have anything without the product itself. So uh, we were planning an open house uh, basically to start showing the model, the house model, that we're, which we're finishing up and it's kind of fighting the weather and things like that. But we're working on it hard here. Yeah, All right, fantastic. Well, then maybe we can kind of, look into that conversation also kind of going back with the with YSE and, and see how feasible that is but I think it would be it would be a great valuable opportunity mm -hmm. uh, so it's so a glad glad to hear um, but okay anyway m moving onwards uh, uh, from that really exciting thing for us um, so what we do and did want to do is it clearly define what the final deliverable will look like and what will it include and continue to collect that information to round out our understanding so I'll, I'll move that on uh, to Guillermo of course. Um, so in terms of the this slide, we're, we're really thinking about like the goals that you have specifically for the seed eco home. Um, so I, I think that just a couple of clarifying points here. The first one is, um, you know, one, one of the goals that we understand based on our previous conversations and our own research on uh, this product line is uh, 
first and foremost to provide a modular home that can cut uh, housing construction costs. Um, and we believe with this current model that you're working on the Rosebud, it's a, about a 100 square, 1,000 square foot home to be built in five days by 24 people at a cost of 100K. Um, so that's kind of a pretty easy fact. And then in addition to that, there's also kind of a more, um, there's the larger goal of this, uh, of this project, which is a little bit more holistic, which is to create a sustainable solution to address the housing crisis. I believe that this was kind of, uh, I, I believe that this project had in mind to address the housing crisis here in the United States, but I mean, obviously like there, this can be applicable elsewhere as well. Um, and then in addition to that, um, again, like a, a pretty central theme here um, and something really central to this business is to kind of ensure that it's going to stay within the ethos of creating uh, an economy of abundance. And in addition to that, it's to upscale the workforce and empower people to contribute. Uh, and then in terms of um, some more kind of uh, more practical goals of this that we understand is to generate a revenue for um, other OSC activities and to get those on, off the ground. And in addition to that, it's to really kind of um, use this uh, product as a vehicle to um, create more partnerships between OSC uh, and other organizations that would be, uh, you know, able to kind of create a, an, an accretive relationship with the company. Okay, so, uh, so just to, hmm? yeah, okay, so a few comments on that and just clarifications. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's about all. So further details. Uh, the 100k price does not include land or the utility connections or legal costs that's just the build build meaning materials plus labor so just to be clear on that the other costs depending on i mean there might be impact fees or other things in some places which are high high demand areas i mean you might get lots of crazy local fees like just to it where for example what's known as impact fees i mean they can be significant like tens of thousands of dollars like for example in san diego or somewhere where it's the fee that allows you to connect to existing infrastructure kind of like get within within the system but in um low jurisdiction areas and unpopulated areas that's negligible or zero other places it might be significant so so the 100k could could actually be done in a case where a person has land and we're ready to build that's it otherwise you're normally going through um, you got to do the land acquisition. You have all kinds of legal costs, whatever closing, as well as utility hookups. Utility hookups. Now, for the utility hookups, we are going to offer an off-grid version, so you don't have to do the electrical part. So, 100% off-grid on the electricity. That we're making that a standard option. So, uh, that may be a little more than 100k price. And, and the 100k is, yeah, we're going to get the exact budget. It, it should be running right out. The only trick around the 100K is right now that the materials have pretty much doubled or tripled again uh, since we drew up the bill of materials, which was uh, about two years ago. Um, so there may be some higher costs there, but uh, we'll see exactly what that is. The promise is still uh, significantly lower than industry standards as far as the cost. Okay, uh, housing crisis worldwide. Yeah, this the, the model here is for stick framing. Now, most people around the world, if you talk about the global context, do not live in stick frame housing. Earth is the most common material that's used around the globe. Uh, I think I think the figure is like eighty percent or something of the world. I mean, talking about including everyone, the the eight billion people on the planet. Uh, for that, we are going to roll out the compressed earth block version of the house. And we're looking to do that after this year, after we, after we get cash flow and stabilize the, the operation with a stick frame, which is much easier. We're going to get into compressed earth block structures using our own machines and tractors. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Economy of abundance, collaborative design. Like uh, the big goal there around the economy of abundance is we're not going to get to the goals of solving housing without large scale collaboration. So to develop collaborative protocols around this project that can also be applied to other projects everything that we work on so refining the collaboration ecology to what what this could really mean for a lot of people to get involved from as simple as you've got you see our work around this you see the website and say oh yeah 
raise your hand, you can get involved as a builder, as a designer, because the demand is huge. Um, John mentioned the open source ecosystems. The, the, the name of that grant is called Open Source Ecosystems. It's, it's not exactly open source ecology. It's called Open Source Ecosystems. But basically, uh, the government right now is funding uh, that particular grant is about creating development and participation ecosystems around open source uh, hardware and software projects. This, this is a great example of that, but uh, the key there being uh, it's, a, it's a big deal to, to define what does the collaboration framework look like for this to be real. Why is everybody not doing this? Obviously, we've got some blocks, like we've got a proprietary economy where one company holds on to its products and, and everyone reinvents the wheel, but this is doing something to address that. Yes, absolutely upskilling the, the workforce the, through the VETS programs or other people. This is regarding uh, training programs for anybody, like tech school, for anybody who wants to get involved as well as the higher level training for uh, education around the design aspects and entrepreneurial aspects because we see that entrep entrepreneurship is the way you can scale this. So we, we're not really thinking about nonprofit sector. We are in a nonprofit sector, but we're an entrepreneurial nonprofit, meaning that the business model does, models that we create would be based on enterprise, not donations. There might be some, it might be a mix, but I mean, the core has to be, this has to stand alone in the marketplace for it to scale. Okay. Yes, absolutely generate revenue to fund further OSC activities, and in particular, the Global Village Construction Set, which we want to finish by 2028. That's our magic deadline by, by which all the machines are ready to go. You can create a micro-civilization in a, in a box inexpensively anywhere in the world. I uh, think possibly even and like a couple of shipping containers with all the equipment that can be used to bootstrap our communities, uh, redevelopments, uh, startups, all, all this. And just to kind of clarify on that point, um, do you have like a specific goal in mind in terms of how much uh, how much revenue you wish to create from the Seed Eco Home uh, product line uh, in order to fund um, other activities? Like, is there is there a specific dollar amount that you're looking to raise? Well, for that, uh, a stable operation would be we estimate if we're running a full model of this this enterprise that other entrepreneurs can replicate will be building two houses per, per month. So uh, mm -hmm. relatively, like if you consider, so the logic there is if you consider building codes and things like that, you might be ending up with two, two week builds. That would be good. Like, you know, streamlined somewhat two weeks, you got your crew that you basically build time is five days, but then legal and other things are another week or so or even that we're in a training program that the other half of the time is actual training or education for the people that are with us, like if, if it's the training program that we're doing this through, but think nominally two houses per month, so 24 a year, uh, as a baseline operation that we want to very clearly see, here's the model for this. Now 24 times, uh, what we'd like to see is 25 to 50K net revenue per build. So what are those numbers there? Uh, six to twelve million. Wait, is that? Am I getting the math right? What's tw or twenty-five or up to fifty one. times? No, we're no, we're we're at one one point two million six hundred thousand to one point two million uh, per year would be a basic successful operation, which we think would be very uh, c completely sustainable. Um, as a base model for what people can replicate. So okay, so here's an entrepreneur that can do this. Uh, here's an incentive for them to get involved. And this is still the affordable housing. We're not talking about sp about expensive housing that um, that exclude people. This is for everybody. And in addition to the goals that we have outlined here, is there another goal that you have in mind that we probably uh, you know didn't get to address? Uh, I think that's that's about it. The, the most important thing when I uh, think about the the project in general is to create the collaborative methodologies to make this work so as we develop the, pr the product the real thing is about developing a methodology for collaborative development that transitions the economy from proprietary to collaborative that is the crown jewel so the substance is there like housing is there yes but that's the the point is to develop methods that this kind of meth 
this kind of process can apply to many products to transition to transform the economy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Wait, so, sorry, before before we had uh, move forward, uh, Martin, you used quite a beautiful phrasing. Uh, would you mind repeating it again, if you can? Uh, it, it, developing a collaborative model, and then you were saying with regards to, I just like the way that you phrased it, and I think it's a very marketable <laughs> uh, right. phrase. For which but. reason I am recording this in case I mess up the words. But the, the <laughs> idea there is, so I'll, I'll post this on, uh, can post this on YouTube afterwards. But collaborative, so a, a collaborative protocol for the summary of it is to transition the economy from proprietary to collaborative. A collaborative protocol. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so then moving on to where we think we can contribute to this. Um, and please interrupt me if you feel like I've gotten anything wrong. But from where we stand, it seems like you have like a really visionary, really innovative, um, really yeah, uh, amazing new product. Um, and people who you're pitching it to are having a hard time really getting their heads around it, be it organizations like Habitat or potential like other builders, um, either because it doesn't fit within the framework that they've already established or if they do understand that, then they just have some skepticism that you can do the work they've been doing a whole lot better than they have ever done it. Um, does that feel true so far? Uh, it's, <clears throat> when I heard the word new, there's nothing new under the sun. I, I do believe in integration <laughs> of many different elements that have been seen before. Key things like modularity, there's definitely innovation on a business model, like um, distributive enterprise meaning that we publish this openly. So there's a bunch of individual elements that have been shown in other things like in open source software or in modular design being the, the key to effective design. The, the design community knows that, that modularity is a good thing. Uh, we have innovated on a swarm build model that how you can do this with, with large groups but the Amish beat, beat us to that hundreds of years ago. So th there's nothing new, but we are combining several elements to make this um, efficient design. I mean, same old, same old, just uh, effective enterprise and then management structures to make this um, actually executable. So, okay. which means that, so, so just to translate that, what you said, it's like, how come people don't get it? Well, the idea is it's the same thing as, as when I got through my college experience and I, uh, and I found more useless the farther I went because I was saying more and more theoretical stuff. Well, the issue about the way we study is that when you're in your discipline, you do not see how things relate. And therefore, when you start crossing so many boundaries, it becomes hard for somebody to get it because you're moving, moving the dial on one thing and another. It's just simply hard to grasp. Nothing too particularly hard, but it's just the whole package is difficult for somebody to, to grasp when you're trying to do something. It's just innovation. So uh, it's just an expansion yeah. of what you're saying. Yeah. No, no, I definitely agree. And I think, so we think that to kind of make this more digestible to other people, there are two key components. And one is the CD go home that you are the uh, like final prototype that you're making. And the other half, we think is a like clear and concise business plan mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. help with yep. that's like a package that addresses like all the key questions related to design construction scale up mm -hmm. so that any apprentice collaborator grant maker partner could take this and like really understand what's going on uh, because all of the documentation mm -hmm. is already mm -hmm. there you guys have it but it's really hard for somebody coming in from the outside mm -hmm. to know what in there is important and what is current so making a final document that really communicates that clearly to them and i must add the strength of the question why like why are we doing this and that is what is the problem of housing what is the problem there you can go through a list of very explicit things that are an issue and if we can relate the solutions to 
a lot of those issues, that would make it a powerful seed starter kit for grant, grant writing or just attracting others. I do have a page on the wiki called, it's called uh, Solving Housing. So we, we want to start with understanding that question because there's people who have written tons of material on it. It's like, well, okay, why is housing expensive? What are the issues there through all this, the parties involved in that whole process? So, so it would be great to start with that. I just want to add that because that would make a compelling case. Okay, here's why, very cl clear statement on why we are doing this and how the solutions apply. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so adding in the why do you think that us creating this document that tries to like bring these together in a bit more of a polished way is that going to be useful to you or is there something yeah. else you'd like us to do or more you'd like us to include or uh, i think if the major output is just clarity and understandability of all the kind of material we have and prioritizing like okay what's say there's the issue of what solving housing means well how do you communicate effectively to show the most important things on top and so forth. Just so basically uh, uh, refactoring, editing towards easy communicability, yeah, that's, that's, that would be enough. We do have a page on the wiki. Um, can I get access to, uh, can I edit in a document as well so I can comment in there? Oh, yeah. Um, let me drop the link so in the chat, sorry. Because what you'll see, like, okay, take a, if you click on solving housing in the chat box, you'll see a bunch of points and maybe it may not be organized. So you have to parse it and, and process this to see, okay, oh, okay, these are some of the issues that are key. And with combined with your own research, you can see uh, that we're going towards a cohesive uh, problem statement that we can then address. Yeah. But while he's working on that, I had a quick question, which is, um, when you think about a clear, concise business model, do you have an audience in mind? Like, are you gonna are you, are you considering tailoring it to a specific one? You know, the apprentice or the collaborator, grant maker, or by definition, a good, concise business model is clear to everybody. I guess, like, how are you thinking about that? Good question. Um, I, I think, yeah, what we had in mind, and and, and I think uh, kind of it's highlighted in the proposed deliverable. Uh, it's it's a business model that can serve both internal and external purposes. Obviously, needing to be edited where where necessary. So there okay. might be some sections of it that might be particularly dedicated to, let's say, uh, someone who might want to be take an entrepreneur who might be willing to take. Uh, this business model on for themselves and kind of bring it forward. There might be sections where you just keep if you want it for a grant application, uh, or there are some that are just for internal purposes. E.g., we might look into what funding or partnership opportunities may exist, and that might be just something for you to look at and consider, rather than necessarily developing it. Uh, sorry, sending it to anybody. I'd like to add. Yeah, and I just so it's okay. Go ahead. It's modular, if you will. Mm -hmm. Max? Oh, well, I was about to say, yeah, I think that we, <laughs> we want to produce produce something that's modular for you all. Mm -hmm. we, we've spent a, quite a bit of time and effort trying to understand um, the OSC model and ideas and how the apprenticeship fits in with the CD Go Home, with the Global Village Construction Set. And so I guess we would be, we would be really thrilled if we can make this distilled in a way that this is really clearly communicated to you, to anyone in, in an hour. And how can we distill this vision so someone can walk away understanding what we've been talking about over the past few meetings in you know an hour presentation or 30 minutes or something like that. Excellent. Yes, that's a great goal. And um, to add to that, we should position this when we publish this, we say, hey, entrepreneurs, this is actually open source and distributive feel free to take this on. So have a clear message that this we're not. This is not for us only. We're going to be very active agents in doing this, but we are not afraid of collaboration. We're saying, hey, the more people steal this, the better. Steal this, yes, and we can work on it together. Or independently, if there's if someone feels excited and they don't want to work with us, but still they they're fueled by uh, good info. That's good. 
Eriko. Uh -huh. Is there anything else we want to discuss on this deliverable, or shall we move to the next bit? I guess are there. Uh, I I have a question. I mean, I, I guess there are some. I, I guess I'm curious in terms of um, if there's anything in the business plan that you would be particularly interested in seeing, just to make sure that we provide that portion uh, into the the business plan that we're going to deliver. I would say that the reality check is the scaling aspects of how fast, how effectively we can train people to execute. Because I think the the product itself, with what I, one thing I learned in my history with open source ecology was production is not the issue. There's things like one is well, one obviously is marketing, but marketing is part of scaling. How do you build your organizational infrastructure to be able to deliver at a larger scale? How do we uh, gain good insight onto that? Because we can say we're going to grow like from one to two to four to how many houses built, you know, uh, in a given time period. But just the reality check on that. What's the industry standards for how fast people can learn and how fast a building operation can get off the ground? And how do we have an advantage? One, by simplifying, like namely, by simplifying the methods that somebody who gets onboarded to our training program can pretty much in a week or two get out in the field with us to be an effective builder. So th details of how we simplify to make this accessible for more rapid learning, like maybe make a compelling case on that. To me, that sounds important because to me it's... Uh, the scalability is, is, is literally at the limit of the first trillion dollar unicorn. It's, this is like if we are open and if we've got good product if we're, and, and if we're collaborative, this can scale to sol solve the issue of housing and the same method can be applied to solving other issues, poverty and war, <coughs> etc. So ambition is high. But I think that the biggest thing there is the reality check of, okay, well, what's possible in theory, and how do we uh, have bold ideas to put it out into practice? Uh, I don't know if that yeah. does that make sense. The, the yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Of, yeah, reality check on on scalable the rate of scalability. Yeah. Um, well, if everyone feels happy on this deliverable, then um, we can move on to just making sure we really understand, and I apologize if any of this is redundant over what we've gone over already, but we just want to make sure that we are 100% on the same page. Uh, who's taking this page? Um, I, I'll take over. Um, thanks, Elise. Um, yeah, I guess we're trying to get caught up on everything that's going hap uh, that's happening over in uh, Missouri. And so you mentioned that you are approaching an open house stage of Rosebud. Um, what, what does that look like? Right now the exterior is pretty much like we're almost ready to take pictures and start publicizing. But uh, as far as the, the open house, I mean, we're shooting for about a month from now. I mean, yeah, we're about a, about a month still. So realistically speaking uh, our schedule for building out in a in the real life that's like may may about may john does that sound right yeah um okay and the first build I guess out in the field out in the real life because this okay. is at our site here as far as the which is the third prototype on site which which is that's coming up quick. Um, yeah. And you said we're expanding your search radius outside of Kansas City. Um, is that for people to work on this home, or is that just for suitable regulations and sites? The idea there was um, we found that Kansas City requires three days for an inspector to show up, which would really throw off the schedule. So we're simply saying, can we uh, work with a, within a jurisdiction that, that we can schedule the actual inspection saying okay we're going to be done on this Friday Friday the inspector comes we cannot do that in Kansas City it turns out 
they come at a three days delay and they don't even tell you the time they're they can sh show any time during the day so it's it's a just a tactical a practical logistical issue so we're just saying okay what are some of the uh, towns around that can they be uh, provide us a simply a, a predictable inspection schedule that would, that yeah that's a interesting um, but that means we have to work out when it's when it's not favorable like that in the like say in Kansas City uh, what do we do well we have to be building multiple buildings at the same time so the schedule does not throw us off mm -hmm. um, yeah and I guess so one thing that we've been grappling with is trying to um, conceptualize how OSC is going to move forward using this kind of um, while building this apprenticeship program simultaneously with the marketing and launch of the CD Go Home, as well as the, um, I guess, upgrades and development of the factory farm, is the apprenticeship program and, I guess, the factory farm upgrades, are these still key components to the launch of the Seed Eco Home? Um, or are you looking for, I guess, a more traditional construction crew at the moment? Like, what is, what's, the yeah. progress on finding hands on deck. In a longer term, meaning after the first few builds, they are critical as far as building more infrastructure and doing the full training program. Immediately, we are in a bind, but the solution there is we simply go out through the channels that we have, through OSC, VETS, channels, and whatever we can do, we simply import people to, to do the build, basically swarm in on the, on the one week or up to two weeks I mean that gets into budget issues you how, how are you gonna be paying people for two weeks if the, there's um, a thousand hours of work which is five which is really like three days with 24 people um, so that issue exists we're gonna have to basically pay people and and rely on people who have some skill uh, or builders as well but the only thing there was that with builders a lot of builders are not used to our methods so there might be a lot of pushback from uh, people simply not wanting to build using the methods we use. I mean, that we've seen that for real. Uh, so we're mm -hmm. right now our strategy is to get people who are uh, tradespeople or skilled, basic skilled builders in something. As long as they have some practical skills, the the, the learning curves here aren't big because of our simplified building methods. But that issue, yes, we have to in the first build. That's that's the hardest part. Uh, where do we get the crew when, before we have trained the crew? That's that's still a thing. So we have to resolve that. Okay. Currently, um, we're going to pay people good money and and uh, possibly pay for the and and the hotels and the logistics to make that happen. So the first build might be more expensive. Do you is the I guess OSE sort of volunteer community or I know people have paid for training programs yeah. like this. Is that? Oh, good question. A Good point, and we we will combine all the all that we have in our arsenal to do it from people paying to. Uh, so basically, if you we can have a, a good number of people who are more or less skilled, and then people some people who are volunteering, other people who are paying for an an immersion build experience, which all those we have done before. So we, yeah, mm -hmm. we have to come up with a package that works for the first one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess. Do you have a current? cost estimate and um, I guess May, May is coming up a little bit sooner than I anticipated um, you breaking ground on some of these. Yeah. Um, are you interested in grant funding coming in to support this so, first stage? So right now in the bank we have a, a budget of 140k to pull this off so uh, there's that's like just enough to, <clears throat> to do this. As far as uh, the t like what's the, why why do we say may I mean right now we're finishing the house but we're talking about a third prototype meaning that we're refining things it's like and, and as soon as we have this why we can say may is that yeah we got to get instructionals and, and documentation but we are ready to build I mean it's um, you know people have been building houses for a long time there's not too much mystery around it outside of that we've got very specific ways of building things which do not rely on just people inviting tradespeople to wing it, we're saying, no, 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 here's exact instructionals, here's exactly what you do. So that part we have to generate as soon as that's there. And the house that's standing there, uh, yeah, we we are ready to build, of course, pending, finding some land and things like that. But land is not an issue around here. Um, 
the, the idea there is with the reality of the house built and, and we can leverage some of our uh, remote CAD work. We've done t teams where people from all over the world get on, get on a computer session we, where we use FreeCAD and Google Docs to actually design and document the modules that we build. We've done that already in our former apprenticeship and, and with remote collaborators. So we do have that capacity by virtue of the open source nature of the project. We use open source software like FreeCAD to do the actual CAD and then the, the buildings uh, and then actual technical drawings and other things. So that is in our favor uh, through the open source. But the schedule is ambitious if we don't um, make it. I mean, we by May, I mean, no, we got we to gotta do it. I mean, May, um, if, if we have an open house, what's the, the question would be like, what is the minimum house, uh, minimum time? Once the, the full build is there, say you arrive here, you're, you've seen the house, it's real, it's, uh, it's as built, and we will build it exactly that way. We're not changing anything at this point. It's a freeze at this point. Um, how quickly can we get the documentation and team to, to show up for the one in real life around the Kansas City area, is the question. The practicality yeah, there, are, there's, um, I do believe there, the <coughs> biggest practicality there is six weeks to go through the whole plan check. I think that goes to your next question about engineering. Uh, yes, the, for an engineer to draw up the, the full uh, package that gets submitted to the building department for approval at the plan check phase. That takes six weeks. Okay. Um, I guess that helps. And are there, this might be on the next slide, um, but, or no, it's not, it's on the, um, are there, what are the, I guess, liabilities and risks that you're facing through this? I guess liability is to, uh, or risk is to have complete documentation and a team. Um, because that, if we do then, that, then we're flying. As I said, the, the house here that I live in right now is five days with 50 people, and those are, these were people who were not skilled. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> yeah, this all this all sounds very good. Um, I think we can. We are aiming to wrap this up by two or so to respect everyone's time. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other notes that you want to give us on the current stage of development? I think we just learned a lot, actually. We weren't aware of um, some of these things, but I think that this is a lot that we can start to work with. Um, oh, I guess another another question that I had is, as far as, like, when, as we're kind of thinking about marketing and developing this deliverable, um, what, what are the like major environmental components to this um how like i there's so much waste in in most second frame building um is this is other major waste reductions for this style is there recyclability is there reusability repurposing available with the modular components do they come apart i guess if you talk about end of li life cycle analysis then in principle you can actually if, if the if the roof falls in, you can actually recycle all the modules and use them again. Uh, that's one way. As far as, uh, because we're doing uh, what you can call digital design, meaning we pre-plan everything and we can design for waste minimization. For example, if we're using, uh, uh, if we're making uh, the, the size of the structure uses, for example, standard 16 foot long 2 by 12 lumber, say for the floor joists and roof joists and things like that. So uh, whenever possible, we use stock sections of material and altogether the waste issue, that's uh, in terms of like 100% waste reduction, that'll be more like phase two where we're 3D printing the modules where there is zero waste because any missed prints or pla we did talk about plas plastic reclamation to make plastic lumber in a scenario like that or plastic wood composite f uh, modules at that point we're at the mm -hmm. at the point of recycling recyclability fully if we move to next year not this year but next year with the CEB construction earth is recyclable too uh, the only other, yeah, and so so by the mostly by design, 
at the design phase because we're specifying exactly this is how much you build therefore we this is exactly how you build therefore this is the materials you have wasted so we can plan that more effectively um, can you talk a little bit about the thermal performance as well and how it would compare to the same price point house or yeah, what's like currently available yeah we're meeting uh, <clears throat> industry standards for what uh, what we do so we've got the walls uh, standards like six inch insulation and the main walls on the roof we've got like r42 or something like that which is 12 inches of insulation plus four inches more of of uh, foam insulation for our flat roof uh, so meeting our exceeding industry standards if you go up so this is good for our climate here if you go up to even further north you actually might uh, need to thicken up the walls in terms of insulation uh, but for here this is good the as far as ecological performance I did mention the one selling point we can possibly emphasize is the off-grid system we're planning on seven kilowatts of solar as being standard so we're going to install that on this house here uh, with uh, with a battery system and a smart basically smart home so for example um, in this house here we use things such as a, a chest freezer to fridge conversion where you don't need to use any energy at night so so on the refrigeration part you're doing like zero energy which could lend itself to a smart home and if you're doing smart home controls you can get away with solar and a smart control system so that's another uh, feature that we can promote but the idea that you have the option uh, who else offers the option a standard option of off-grid that may be a selling point I don't know do enough people care about that because um, that will add may add a little bit to the cost but it's uh, solar is actually extremely affordable these days so mm -hmm. um, I think those are a lot of good technical notes that we we can use um, do we I don't know if we have that much more wrap up um, does anyone else have questions on the current stage of the builds project oh that was that was thorough um, yeah and I guess so moving forward a little bit we um, I guess we're, we're interested in doing some <laughs> I guess market research um, and if we would be interested in connecting with the people that you've communicated with at Habitat for Humanity or other potential partnerships to understand their interests, what they're looking for, um, their perspectives on this industry and I guess what they need and their, their vision for world changing. Because um, I know that you know the swarm style build has, you were, I don't know if you were fully inspired, but partly inspired by the Habitat for Humanity style. And so we're wondering if you would be willing to connect us to some other people so we can understand their their needs and wants. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, <clears throat> as far as industry standards for what we know, the, um, what are all the other modular or, or kind of like DIY home systems? So take a look at this industry standard. So we, we do keep... Um, or modular DIY type stuff so here it is and you can evaluate the price points yeah I guess a good comparison um, on price points you know an infographic showing okay this is what the existing things from boxable to cover to earth ships and many others um, graph of cost versus performance size so critical thing is like size because you might see like things like boxable oh cool like fifty thousand dollar home well it's one third the size and that doesn't include any other installation or really any other costs so that, that price is quite misleading so if you can get an honest comparison of industry standards in terms of cost to have a quick uh, overview then the, the main thing is going to be to convince people that this is executable and the time scales like the time scales are crazy it takes seven months to build an average house Right now, apparently, it's about 12 months because of, of material shortages. So if you tell people, oh, five days, they're going to laugh laugh at you. Uh, part of the solution there is work, 
focusing on most accessible simple parts that are available everywhere. That's part of the solution. Like for example, the other day I wrote, read an article that says instruction uh, uh, build times increased by months because people can't get, can't get garage doors. Things like that. So th uh, supply chain matters. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Um, okay, John, you're sending good analysis. Oh, excellent. Uh, does anyone else have anything to wrap up? I, I think I, I just want to leave you with this, which is when we think about labor, one thing that surprised me going down this journey is I have encountered some really phenomenal people who I know are out there that can address sort of like the challenges we're talking about labor. And just like to give you an example, there's this one guy I was introduced to through someone I served with. He's finishing up his undergraduate degree in engineering. He's a Navy vet. Uh, he was actually featured on the Ellen DeGeneres show for some like non charity work he did with his body shop. And I mean, he's ready to move out to Missouri, doesn't care what stage of development OSE is at. He just believes in it that much. And, you know, I, I believe he would do it, right? He owns his own farmland and is interested in building it up. And, and so I guess um, uh, all that to say that there's like really incredible people out there who could potentially be collaborators like for this first build that I never would have thought existed. And so I, you know, I just wanted to share that, that story as like, you know, there's a lot that's possible that may not be apparent just like on the Google machine uh, looking at labor trends. So yeah, yeah, uh, John, send a contact on because that's that's a good person to interview for. Okay, why why a third view, yeah third part? Sure. What do they think about it? Yeah, that, that's a really good idea, Merchan. Thanks. Um, I guess another one last thing is how is the swarm really? I mean, the five day build is sounds really good. Um, is does it is it just um, sorry like I'm trying to phrase this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you build this with 12 people in 10 days? Does, yeah. Do you use yeah, the full people? You can do it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so there's all the possibilities from one person doing it themselves for, for how many days? For the equivalent of 120 days or so? Or mm -hmm. 24 for three days? Does that math okay. work out? Maybe. Can we get your point? Yeah. Um, well, two. yeah, this was incredibly helpful. And yeah, March and John, I guess I just want to emphasize from our group how exciting it's been for us to come together, learn about this. This is very new to some of us, um, less new to Elise. <laughs> but yeah. but I think it's it's a really exciting and compelling vision. And I'm yeah, we're we're really looking forward to working with you all and moving this moving this forward and building something exciting together. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Thank you for saying that. And at the same time, ideas are cheap. The execution is dear. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. 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 So let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, so much. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks I a lot. Think we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Okay. You too. Take care. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.